Thank you all so much for stopping by today. So I wanted to get out here a little bit early this morning. Uh, it's a little bit cool, but because it's going to be 80 degrees today, um, but I wanted to share with you some of the early spring fruit blooms and fruit that is starting on some of the trees that are around the property. Now, when we first looked at this house, it was so many pears on one of the trees. By the time we got here, y'all, I don't know where the pears went. I did catch a couple of squirrels on the pears, but I want to take you around to some of the different things that I show that is starting to get fruit on the trees. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So let's make this peach tree our first stop. So here's the thing, y'all. I had every intention to trim this tree and I didn't, but the blooms were so beautiful um, this spring. So now they're starting to leaf out and I'm happy to report, if you all can see, it's starting to get peaches on here. Now what I will do a little bit later um, as they grow a little bit bigger so that I can kind of inspect them is I will come in and trim out some of the peaches just so that first of all they don't get uh, very heavy and weigh down the branches and then also we can get bigger peaches but last year when we looked at this property uh, a lot of people said because of that late freeze a lot of fruit trees had suffered but I'm excited because peaches are actually one of my favorite fruits and I can do so many things with peaches like make a peach cobbler. Now, maybe a little bit later, I will have someone just trim it up to a level that we can maintain because there is no way that I can get like all the way up and y'all know how I feel about a lot of fruit trees. I don't mind sharing with the animals, but don't be wasteful. That's all I gotta say about that. But I see a lot of peaches that are forming on this tree. So now let's make our way back here. Actually, that tree back there is a peach tree as well. But this is the tree, when we looked at this property, that had a lot of pears on there. That's really what drew me to this property because I was like, wow, um, there are some fruit trees already on the property. And so I see this also had beautiful blooms. I see the peach, um, the pears that are forming on here. But here's the thing, this is another tree. I'm like, okay, if we can get trimmed, if we can get some trimming. And I told y'all the guy across the street has a tree service but it's so many pears up top. And I know y'all probably can't see it, but when I tell you that top up here, right there, it is loaded with pears. So again, the birds, the animals, y'all take the top because I can't get to it. Just leave me some pears down here where I can at least reach, but there are lots of pears that are forming and it really does need to be uh, trimmed up but we you know unless we have some type of equipment or something like that I know that we can't get to it but just leave us the bottom the bottom uh, part of the tree because as a matter of fact yesterday I actually bought some pears so it's always good to not have to buy different things during certain seasons and so this would be great so this is another tree that I'm hoping we're gonna get lots of fruit off of as well. So let's make a, a quick pit stop right here. I brought with me these two pomegranate trees because I had just bought them right before um, someone had put a bid on our house in Savannah. And it actually had like one pomegranate when we left, but this I actually potted up and I brought these two with me. Um, and I think I'm going to keep them in pots. I'm, I am going to pot them up, but I think I'm just going to keep them in pots and then maybe put them somewhere in this area right here. We won't put those in the ground. And we're going to walk here so that I can show you. Um, and we did a video on this. This is going to be our berry patch all along this fence line. And we have the tea plants right here. And then we also have the blackberries right here now yesterday I started with the with the blueberries 
So we have the pink lemonade blueberries that are right here. And then we have the regular blueberries that don't require a pollinator. I think they're sharp blue blueberries. Um, but I did the lazy method, y'all. So what I'm gonna do, I just dug the hole. Um, I had to add some gypsum, which is uh, breaks up soil, uh, breaks up clay soil, and I added some berry tone. So now, just like the blackberries and the tea plant, I'm gonna come back in, put cardboard down all around the plants, and then we'll just let, um, that way we'll smother the grass that way and the cardboard can just kind of um, break down over time. And then we got lots of pine trees on the property. So then I'll put the pine trees right here. So these are, this is our blueberry patch and I'm really feeling like this area over here will be our strawberry patch. So we'll have some berry patches, which I think is the perfect place because as I'm walking over here, this is the mulberry. And I put up a short that asks you all, what, what do you do with mulberries? Like I can make mulberry jam, uh, dehydrate mulberries, but the tree is loaded. It's loaded with so many mulberries and this is not a fruit that I am used to, you know, working with, but I know that a lot of people are. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you all of the mulberries on this plant right here. And again, when we looked at the property, um, it wasn't any mulberries on here, but this is one that goes all the way up as well. And when I tell you it's loaded, it's loaded. We need a lot of tree trimming around here so that we can be able to reach some of these things. So we'll just have to deal with maybe like the lower branches of all of these mulberries. I'm not gonna say I'm gonna harvest it all, but I'll do what I can. So as we start to go up front, y'all, still got fruit trees and they're waiting on me. They're actually starting to put, this is the, which one is this one? I have lemon and I have lime. This is the, this is the Persian lime. So I need to get with it because it needs to be potted up. I may just pot it up and put it in a bigger pot until I decide what I'm gonna do. Now, I definitely know that these are gonna be containers for me because I am testing out the, um, you know, we, we've moved and so we're in 8A now and a lot of citrus is on that line. It's on the line of will it make it or will it not? So if it gets too cold because last season, uh, it got down to 13 and I know that's really pushing it for citrus trees. So that way, if I need to pull it in side, um, if it gets too cold that I won't lose the plant, but this Persian lime has limes growing on here. So I'll make sure that I get this potted up. So that means I need to go get some potting soil and at least put them in a bigger container and get them out this small container. Cause I, I have had these for a while to where we got them on clearance at the end of the season. And so that will be on my garden chore list this, this week. But have y'all ever smelled citrus blooms? They smell so good. So yeah, let's put that on the list for what we have to get done this week. So speaking of citrus, this is the citrus plant that we did a video on. Um, these right here, the Arctic Frost Satsuma, they're four more cold tolerant, but um, I'll make sure I link the video because it did have a couple things, like if you put it in a pot, it's not as cold tolerant as it says. Um, and so that's why I wanna put all of my citrus in containers in the event that if I want to move it in, if it gets way too cold, then I won't lose the plant. Now they haven't started any blooms on here, but it's putting on a lot of growth, which is good. And then those plants that I underplanted it with, those are looking really, really pretty. This is the alyssum and then also the, um, oh, the pansies that I had started from seed. And I just figured that the foliage would eventually kind of shade this so that they can just kind of grow underneath. So we have this here as well. 
Okay, so we're gonna finish this off with what we have up front. And I've shared this with you, but during the time um, it was in the fall. I don't know if this is a cherry tree that actually produces like cherries or if it's an ornamental cherry tree. So I'm really watching this as well. It looks like I saw some cherries getting ready to form, but this one, uh, I just have to watch because I'm not sure. Uh, my dad did tell me it was a cherry tree, but again, I don't know if it's like the ornamental type or the type that actually produces the cherry fruit. And see, I see some cherries right up here, right up top. But once again, these trees are tall. And so it's like, how are we going to get them? We'll have to get a ladder. Um, but now that I'm showing y'all this video, I do see some cherries that are forming. So it'll be interesting to see. And then y'all know this was the one that produced so many crab apples last season. And when I tell you the blooms on this were so pretty, and I know it's gonna have lots of crab apples because if you see, uh, they're starting to form right here. This time I did say that I'm going to try my hand because uh, when I tell you they were loaded, they were kind of like the mulberry tree that I just showed you. It was just crazy. And they all actually, they didn't drop. They just kind of dehydrated on the tree. But when I tell you the blooms are so beautiful, they still are, but when it first bloomed out, really, really pretty. Um, that's why I like the crab apple trees. And as a matter of fact, you can see that's like a dehydrated one right there. Lots of dehydrated ones that just dried out right there on the tree. But I will pick some this year and I will uh, try my hand at crab apple jelly at least okay so that's a few things that are happening right now in the garden um like i said before i'm gonna go ahead and get some potting soil just so i can at least get some of the citrus that i just showed you planted um and i do have some bigger pots that i am going to put them in let me show you really quick um and we should have enough because i got four citrus plants but again, until I can figure out the pot that I want them to be in and what I want to do, um, I'll put them in a pot like this. This is a pretty, a pretty big pot right here. So we'll get those potted up um, in this, and then that way they can still grow and get out of those small containers. So I have my work cut out for today. So as always, thank you all so much for watching this video. Make sure you share this video with your family and your friends. And if you're not a subscriber, go ahead, tap the subscribe button. Make sure you tap the bell so that you can receive notification each and every time we upload a new video. Again, thank you all so, so much for watching. And until the next video, bye-bye.